A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What man among you with a hundred sheep losing one would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one till he found it? And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders and then, when he got home, call his friends together and his neighbors? Rejoice with me, he would say, I have found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over ninety-nine virtuous men who have no need of repentance. Or again, what woman with ten drachma would not if she lost one light a lamp and sweep out the house and search thoroughly till she found it? And then when she found it, call together her friends and neighbors. Rejoice with me, she would say. I have found the drachma I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is more rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He also said a man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself to one of the local inhabitants, who put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would have willingly filled his belly with the husk the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses. How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want? In here I am dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. Then the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out the best robes and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We got to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was out in the fields and on his way back. As he drew near the house, he could hear the music and the dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servants. And your father has killed the calf we had been fattening because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry with them and refused to go in. And the father came out to him and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders, yet you never offered me so much as a kid to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you killed the calf we had been fattening? The father said, Son, you are with me always. And all that I have is yours. But it is only right that we should celebrate and rejoice because your brother here was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. There are many who are not content that the good will eventually have their day. Their satisfaction is complete only when the bad are necessarily punished. We worry that God might be too lenient, worry that there might not be hell for the bad guys. Like the older brother, our problem is that we have never fully heard or understood God's words. My child, you have always been with me. 
All that I have is yours. So rather than be happy and grateful for the blessings of God, we are obsessively upset with his mercy shown to those who we believe don't deserve it. This incapacity to let go of the misdeeds of others perhaps betrays our own selfish intentions that our obedience and goodness should be rewarded. Real love, forgiveness and celebration have long gone out of our hearts. We need to let go of the idea of a bookkeeping God and understand that God loves because he wishes to save. Can I rejoice because my brother who was dead has come back to life?